You can't tell me whether or not y'all ain't listening to me. Whether Samson is going to hell, it's not your call. Hallelujah. You don't know who God's going to tolerate. And he said, listen, you better be careful who you start talking about who ain't going to make it. It may be you. I wish I had somebody here. Be careful how you condemn folk for the same condemnation that you condemn with may one day come back at you. My God. That's why I'm careful not to hurt the saints or add because the church is the only army that will abandon its wounded. I know folk don't like to hear this kind of stuff. We'll, we'll, while you're laying in the street dying, we'll keep moving and pass over on the other side. Hallelujah, like the good Samaritan. We coming down your street, but if you are in if you're sitting over there hurting and messed up, it takes somebody to cross the street sometimes. Sometimes we got to cross the street and expose ourselves to all oh, y'all to what uh, what hurts somebody else. So just cause I'm on that side of the street, see we too conscious of what folk gonna say about you. They gonna say something about you anyway, but if you pick up somebody, hallelujah. We're afraid that they're going to talk about us if we don't, if we don't, if we go on the other side of the street. You, you ain't that sanctified that you can't cross the street. You don't have that much Holy Ghost that you can't go across the street and help pick up somebody that's been wounded by the way. I can't get no help. So the church has to come together. And uh, I'm just excited about what we're doing, how we're doing it. We're covering, we're connecting, and we're celebrating the saints. And I feel good about it in this day and time. And so I want you all to pray for us. And I, I'm, 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 I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing what I feel is is my opportunity. I don't have. I told somebody this is my last hurrah. I don't intend getting in nothing else, being with nothing else. This is it for me. I can't get nobody to help me. I won't be, you won't see me jumping the cot, running over here, running over there. See, some folks just run because they want to run, but I'm going to run to something that's worth running to. And and, uh, I praise the Lord. And thank God for what he has done for us. Turn your Bibles for about 10 minutes. Bishop Brown is here. Good to see you, Kurt. I'm telling you, it's just good to be here tonight. I'm praising the Lord. Just give me a few minutes to talk to you about something that the Holy Spirit laid on my heart. The presence of God, the Holy Ghost empowered packed it in my spirit for tonight and I don't want you to to get I, I don't want I just had to say what I had to say in order to get to where I had to go first Samuel 17 uh, chapter number uh, 17 first Samuel chapter 17 uh, verse number 47 17 47 first Samuel 17 47 17 47 I praise the Lord tonight I feel like preaching now I you know, I have to get some of this stuff off of me in order for me to accomplish what the Lord has placed on my heart. 47 says, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistines. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and slung it and threw it. And he gave it to the Philistine and smote him in his forehead. And the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone. 
and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword, drew it out of his sheep thereof and slew him, cut off his head herewith. And when the Philistine saw their champion was dead, they fled. They saw their champion was dead, they fled fled. I want you to do me a favor. I ain't going to preach but a few minutes and I'm getting on out of here but I want you to look at somebody and this is what I want you to tell them. I didn't come this far not to throw my rock. That's what I want to talk about. I didn't come this far not to throw (laughs) look at three people and tell them I didn't come this far not to throw my rock now I don't have I don't have the time or the effort tonight to do with this in terms of the historical significance of the text to look at this from any kind of hermeneutical position but to really understand this text rooted deeply in its historical concept I want to be able tonight to say to you with all of my heart and mind that this particular passage gives us and heralds to us a unique moment in the life of David when he makes his break into his success and into what we come consider to be a time of effort for his life. David is now not simply, he was just a shepherd boy before this moment. He was just a carrier of food before this moment. He wasn't, he wasn't nobody that everybody knew. He wasn't anybody that everybody was excited about. He was one of the little boys in the house of Jesse that was on his way to feed victuals to his brothers and to give them what it was that they needed in order for them to achieve their battle. He was taking food to the front line, but he also understood that he was going to see some of the great champions of Israel, the great battle worthy men who had fought and stood. Ahithophel was there, and some of the great fighters of David were there, and he was coming to see everything that, 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 that was going to be a part of what he considered to be his victory but now all of a sudden he gets to the field and he he's waiting for a fight he's looking for a battle he's ready to see something take place and all of a sudden he hears this voice in the valley of Elah he hears this voice shouting out obscenities and shouting out invections and shouting out all kinds of of nasty and obscene things and insults against the God that he had served and now all of a sudden David said I know it's going to be a fight because ain't no way in the world they're going to let somebody talk about God like that. It's no way in the world that my friends my my brothers, I know either one of my brothers going to at least run out there and throw a spear at him or something ain't nobody going to let that man talk about God like that. It's interesting to me that this hour has now come timing has fulfilled its purpose David didn't go on a mission that day to fight he went on a mission to take food but sometimes a routine mission can turn into a mission that will change the course of your destiny that's why you cannot despise the day of small things you cannot despise the day of doing small things because if you do you will lose sight of where it is that God said honey that's why a lot of folk they can't they'll never get there because the stage has never been big enough for them if it's not big enough for them they're not going to go to it and it's got to have somebody there that they want to impress but sometimes you got to sweep the floor before you can own the house can I get anybody here who understands if you're going if you're going if you're going to possess something you got to learn how to work you got to learn how not to be demeaning but sometimes God will humble you through the small task in order to give you an opportunity to reach your place of destiny and success. Do I have anybody here who understands that it may not 
be the prettiest job in the world. It may not be the most uh, attributable job in the world. Folk may not be running around calling your name, but it may be the place where God will look when he wants to transform, transfer, and translate his kingdom. It may be where you are right now that God is going to look for the next level of anointing. Can I get anybody here who understands that God is looking for folk that's not caught up in the task but rather caught up in the understanding of the passion of work that no matter what I've got to do I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it with joy. I'm going to do it with God's blessing and I'm not going to let anybody stop me. I'm not going to let anybody tell me that this is demeaning because you can't insult me when I'm working for God if I got to pick up trash outdoors some folk will walk around the church and won't even pick paper up off the floor y'all don't hear me because they think they're too good for that the devil is a lie you got to work you got to put yourself in position you got to position yourself for greatness and if you don't position yourself for greatness it will never come your way I don't have to have a stage I don't have to have a, I know in whom I believe David said, listen, I'm going on a routine mission, but I can't stand this. I wish to God that sometimes we get a little bit more ticked off than we do when folks start messing with our kingdom and with our church instead of always jumping on the bandwagon and telling folk they understand. No, I don't understand. I represent a God that's bigger than anything you can do or say. And God's been too good to me to let you sit there and talk to me denigratingly about the God that's save me from the mess that I was in and then I'm going to agree with you about what you know sir I want you to understand say something about him you're going to have to deal with me say something about him you're going to have to deal I said say something about him you're going to have to deal with me say something about him and you're going to get the fury of Woodson y'all I wish we were like that about one another that would keep a whole lot of mess from starting in the church if every time somebody brought a bone you would look at him and tell him, get on up out of my face. I don't want to hear that mess because that's somebody God is using. Do I have anybody? Somebody lift your hands and I feel the Holy Ghost now. Somebody lift your hands and holler glory. I know, I know the devil don't want you to bless him and the devil doesn't want you to glorify God but the devil is a lie somebody got to stand up and say I've had enough I wish to God that when the church gets uh, y'all ain't here when you've done all the stand stand anyhow it's time for us to stand up and tell the devil you said enough you messed with our God enough and I'm not taking it anymore you might as well shut your mouth now David said, that's enough. I wish I had time because, see, sometimes you don't know how the, the, the little things, Bishop, the little things, Bishop, the little things in life may be preparing you for the big things. That's why you can't allow yourself. You know, David said, I tell you what, if y'all don't have nobody to fight him, I'd rather die than hear this. I'd rather die than listen to him talk about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'd rather die than to let y'all tell me that they're going to talk about our God like that and nobody's going to do it. Y'all might as well go ahead and get your spear because you're going to have to kill me because I'm going to fight him. If I don't have nothing to fight him, I'm going to fight him. And sometimes the devil don't understand the necessity of you understanding that your passion for God may be where God elevates you is how passionate you are about God is how much you love him that sometimes ignite his desire to elevate you and put you in the next level that's why when the Hebrew boys got in the fiery furnace I know I ain't got time to preach but when they got in the fiery furnace it was not until they made the declaration that the God we serve is able to deliver us but if not we still are not going to bow and it's after they came out of the fire without any smoke in their clothes that God elevate them promotion is not going to come until passion is seen, until God knows that you love him more than you love passion. I can't, if you just want a title, God said, I ain't got nothing to do with that. But I want some folk who love me more than they love titles who have put them. I wish I had about five folk who are holler, put yourself on the line. I 
beseech you. I feel like preaching now, but I better shut my mouth. Look at somebody. I beseech you, brother, and by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. And be not conformed, but transformed. You ain't going to tell me. You might as well kill me if you think I'm going to love God any less. I'm going to work. I'm going to work. I'm going to work while it's day. Okay, okay, I got to get out of here. I got to get myself out of here. But I want you to look at somebody and tell them, thank God, I'm ready for the moment. I need about six people to holler, it's time for my challenge. I'm... I, I don't know why I'm here tonight in Danville, but I came tonight to challenge somebody that the biggest thing you ever faced in your life is about to come at you. But God told me to tell you, you have what it takes in order to defeat it. I wish I had some of the biggest thing you've ever faced is about to jump in your face. The biggest thing you're about to face is about to tell you, you ain't worth uh-huh, a nickel's worth of dog meat, but the devil is a liar, whatever that thing is God said it is defeatable if you love the David said look I'll fight him and they tried to shoot him up but don't put on nothing you ain't never fought with don't go with nothing that's why I thank God I don't have to be different I don't have to be anything else in order to get the job done sometimes a lot of folk David was trying to put on uh, Saul's armor he said I can't wear this stuff I ain't never fought nobody in this I fought a lion and a bear that's the only resume I got I killed a bear and I killed a lion. Now I'm ready for my giant. Come on. And I didn't have no armor then and I don't need nobody's armor now because I got the right armor for the fight. Put on. I wish I had somebody to holler. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. I need somebody to holler. Glory. I'm ready for this fight. I want you to high five. I feel like hollering. I want you to high five somebody and tell them I'm ready for this one. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm up to the task. This is the biggest thing I've ever had to come against, but I'm ready for this. I, I made up my mind I'm going to defeat this Goliath if it's the last thing I do. He ain't going to keep talking about my God and thinking Mr. Big Stuff is so big that can't nobody defeat him. The devil is alive. This is my opportunity. This is my time. And come hell or high water, I'm meeting him tomorrow. I'm coming to the Valley of Elah. And when he started hollering that foolishness, he's going to have to deal with me. I want you to look at somebody. And tell them the devil is going to have to deal with me tomorrow. I, I, I wish I had him. I don't know who I'm talking to. But the devil going to have to deal with me tomorrow. For I'm coming right. I'm about to get out of here. Somebody lift your hands and holler. Yeah. 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 I feel something. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't get nobody. I can't get nobody. Yeah, yes, I need somebody here. Come on, yes, Shamama, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, la, la, yeah, Shamama, yeah, Shamama, boss, shake it, yeah, yeah, yeah.